So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and Postman's been again and uh, must have the busiest postman in the world, my postman. Um, and he's delivered a pre-order, which I thought you might be interested in seeing. So this is the new um, bolt action um, campaign book, D-Day. British and Canadian sectors. Um, obviously published by friends at uh, Warlords and also in conjunction with Osprey. And it looks to be the usual really high quality book. Um, if you're into your bolt action and you're into your late war, you're probably gonna want this. So let's have a look at it, shall we? So first thing to say about this book is it's a fairly chunky edition. Um, 192 pages here to be exact of really high quality um, images scenarios um, you know everything you want in us in one of these bolt action books um, and really good value um, even if you buy this direct from warlords um, it will cost you 20 quid which is not bad at all um, and it, as I say if you're into this later period um, I think this is a later period Western Front as well. I think it's going to be something that really, really interests you. Uh, by the way, uh, in the description, you'll find an affiliate link to Warlords um, where they give me a little percentage of every sale. Um, so if you feel like supporting the channel, it doesn't cost you anything extra. Just click through that and buy the edition through there. Also, um, you can buy this very, very same book on Amazon which is what I did um, on Amazon it's about uh, 13 pounds um, at the moment there's also an affiliate link down in the description there as well for that one depends what you want if you want to go to direct to warlords or you want to go via the evil empire that is Amazon anyway let's have a look at this book because it really is very interesting um, I haven't had a chance to read in huge detail but um, so far, I've been very impressed with what I have seen. It's the usual mixture these campaign books uh, have of mixture of really good scenarios. Some of them appear to be linked um, that take you f basically as the Allies land um, a D-Day and they're breaking out, breaking off the beach, pushing inland. So the first scenarios are actually called pushing inland and they're all set in that early stage. Then there's the race for Col. Um, You've got tactical objectives inland, so that's more sort of skirmishy type games, like going after V weapon sites. Uh, you've got the assault on Con itself, um, street fighting, if you see a thing. Uh, you've got Operation Goodwood. Uh, you've got Canadian Offensive, Breaking Out. And then, of course, the thing that a lot of people like um, to see is the unique... Um, new troop types and vehicles that are brought into the game with each of these uh, scenarios. Um, <clears throat> so you're not disappointed here, you've got new British and Commonwealth units, you've got not that many new German ones but there's a couple and then there's some um, sector specific or theatre specific uh, army lists um, which give you a lot of extra options. So you've got British and Commonwealth options, you've got uh, uh, theater, uh, infantry ones, you've got armoured ones, you've also got um, armoured car squadrons, you've got German static defence, static division um, troops, and you've got panzer divisions as well. You've also got a whole load of new vehicles for um, armoured observation vehicles, which look fun, and also interestingly new officers and chaplains um, which we'll take a look at look at um, you've got um, British commandos uh, you've got Canadian army units you've got Hitler youth um, field uh, Luftwaffe field division um, army lists and then a number of special rules so again really well done and I do like these books. I don't play as much bolt action as I'd like to. That's, whoops, excuse me. I really enjoy bolt action as a rule system. I think it's really good. Um, but I find down my 
my club um it's not quite as popular um as it is at some places but i do still like to buy these books just because they are such high quality so now let's we'll have a quick look at some of the things that they've got in here before um we get too far into here so there's the initial scenarios so this is um let's say oops let's go back to this page so it's called d-day pushing inland so this is the early phases as the troops are trying to break into the break off the beaches so you've got some uh, there's one scenario there coastal villages there's lots of history in these books and that's the other thing i love about them they're really good books they're well researched generally um, and got an awful lot of information so if you're fascinated even if you don't play the game i think these books have a lot of value to them you've got um, this fight is entirely in the wood between canadians and germans which is uh, going to be an interesting one um, you've got yeah, got special rules for fighting in woods, which is interesting. You got uh, Villiers Bocage and the race of a con. So, um, battle actually in, in amongst Villiers, Villiers Bocage. I'm probably saying that wrong, but yeah, the battle in there, which is actually, uh, yeah, that one's just uh, Tank Wars. Uh, game so uh, what's interesting in this book they've got a mixture of tank wall scenarios and normal scenarios which is which is interesting so this one is entirely vehicles fighting amongst the buildings which is uh, going to be interesting the germans largely have um, um, tigers and panthers <laughs> which is quite scary um, then you've got tactical uh, this is moving inland uh, continue moving land looking at special objectives so this is capturing a radar station um, which i think could be really good fun um, so in this one the british forces are chosen from late war Can um, commando troop selector uh, within this book uh, choosing royal marines uh, units over army units with the following exceptions no armored vehicles um, Instead, the British player can take a single Churchill AVRE or an M4A4 Sherman flail tank, of which there's also details in here. The Germans take the Luftwaffe defence reinforced platoon. However, no 88s may be taken. Um, there's a preparatory bombardment and everything else, which is, looks a fun game. There's also this one, which is to secure a V weapon raid. Um, sorry, secure a V weapon, um, which you know, it's a lovely uh, model in here. And if you're into your, uh, creating a nice looking um, table, great scope to develop your own um, kind of scenario and your own terrain features for that. Um, then you've got the assault on Con, another load of really interesting scenarios by the look of it. I'm not, you know. If you if you're interested in this, you'll buy the book and look at the look at the scenarios. So I'm not going to run through all of them, just show you the kinds of things there are. Um, you've got some as they do very often in these new books. You get some special characters. So you've got so Lieutenant Colonel Lockhart Ross Fulton, um, who is um, what is he? A major. Um, he has a number of special characteristics which is kind of interesting as unflappable leadership all units activated by major fulton using your you men snap to action rule may ignore the effect of one pin which is kind of cool he hates the ss so that has a special rule he's also dogged and he's lucky um so that's kind of fun you've got the street fighting in Kong. which looks brutal. Uh, the uh, assaults, Assault on Hill 112, which again looks pretty brutal. Then you've got the Great Offensive. So this is, you know, the next stage of the operation as they're, as they're trying to break out um, past Con. Um, you've got um, Operation Goodwood, which again is another um, tank game. So primarily tank vehicles, but using bocage, uh, which is interesting. 
And you've got this section, this uh, bit of the book is all about Canadian offensives, uh, Canadian offensives, put your teeth back in Dom. You've got uh, opera uh, Operation Topal Totalize, which is the Canadians trying to capture Hill 122 and hold it against counterattacks. You've got uh, scenario 12 is the death of the Black Baron. Now this is a really interesting scenario and I really fancy playing this. So this is um, a game where um, you have to take on um, Michael Wittmann, um, which I think could be really good fun. So the Germans must include General uh, Michael Wittmann in his Tiger One and two to seven Tiger Ones. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to need a lot of armor to play this one out. Um, the Allies have any number of Sherman 3s, uh, up to one uh, Firefly um, 5C for every Sherman 3 taken. So it's a straight up fight there. So this one really interests me. This is Kill Wittmann. So this one is two players cooperating against an automatically activated German force, which I think is really interesting. So um, you have um, the, the allies are divided into two and they can basically, depending on what happens in the game, the Germans respond, um, which I think is kind of fun. Um, so you have Canadian dice and you have British dice again, and the Germans are automatically activated, which I think this could be great fun. Then they've got special rules for Wittmann himself here. Tells you a bit about him as a background. Um, his Tiger tank is veteran and it's 519 points. Wow. Um, but uh, um, he has a number of real attributes. So he has a uh, fierce ambush. Whenever this unit fires from ambush, it may fire its main gun twice, <laughs> either at the same target or against two different ones. Oh, holy smoke, that's powerful. He has lucky. Um, so play when an enemy is about to roll on the damage results chart against the vehicle. The roll is not made and the vehicle does not suffer any further adverse effects from the hill from the hit. That's pretty major, right? But it can only be used once a game. You can also use hair trigger. Play this after the vehicle has make, made a run move and you can shoot. So that's normally obviously not allowed to do. Normally you're only allowed to advance and fire, but with this uh, hair trigger, once a turn, once a game, sorry, um, you're allowed to fire after you've run. Eye for terrain, play when the vehicle ends its move at least 12 inches away and in cover from all enemy units. The vehicle goes hidden as if it's using hidden deployment. I mean, this thing could be immense. Battle awareness, play after both sides have deployed. If both players wish to use this ability, roll off to see who goes first. You may reposition this vehicle up to 12 inches away from its original post position, but still abide by deployment rules. So basically you could set your tank up and you go, hang on, I don't like what's happening opposite me. You instigate that, re-roll it and move his tank somewhere different. <laughs> which is pretty mean. You got the breakout section, number of scenarios here again, very interesting. You got uh, this guy's fascinating, uh, Major David Curry, who was a Canadian officer. Um, no picture of him, which is a shame. Um, so he basically, um, in one particular battle around, uh, well, actually no, it was a rec reconnaissance around uh, St. Lambert, he uh, alone on foot uh, and then later on leading his uh, tank took on a, um, a Russian, a German sniper uh, firing his rifle from the uh, cupol, cupola of the tank while his crew continued to engage German vehicles. So he's, he was sticking out the top of the turret firing his rifle at sniper. <laughs> Um, apparently he was he was everywhere during the battle, inspiring, inspiring, rallying and leading his men as they defeated desperate German attempts to break out. Um, and he was the only officer in his battle group who didn't become a casualty. He survived the war entirely um, and made lieutenant colonel. And he only died in 1986 at the age of 73. So hell of a character. He also has the dogged trait, hates the SS. 
uh, has personal reconnaissance, so he counts as an intelligence officer, which is an extra rule in here. And he also has, he's a tank commander, so he has exceptional aptitude at commanding tanks, means that any armoured vehicle within his command range may re-roll failed order and morale checks. Massive. So, really good. You've got, um, within this, I think there's, yeah, they talk about the uh, Typhoon as well. Really good scenarios. So that's all your scenarios. You've got 13 scenarios um, covering the breakout, basically from the beach. Then you've got, this is the thing I think a lot of people get very excited about, some additional Commonwealth uh, units. You've got armored core, um, sorry, infantry squads and teams that basically are on armored cars. So these are reconnaissance um, squads, basically. They count as infantry, but you put them in um, half tracks or white scout cars, um, or even uh, C-15 TA armored trucks, uh, which is kind of fun. They have an anti-tank uh, rifle platoon detachment. Now this kind of works like, is it the Japanese? I think have the similar thing where instead of having a two man crew, you can act effectively buy extra men to man the anti-tank rifle. So they can basically soak up extra casualties. So normally, you know, two men is all you get with an anti-tank rifle. This one will give you, well, you can have up to two additional men. Um, you can also have a man there with an LMG as well. <laughs> So you could have an uh, anti-tank rifle and an LMG in a four-man group with an, with an NCO uh, or even a mortar, a light mortar if you want. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Royal Engineer section, they're stubborn if you want them. You've got uh, Bren anti-aircraft guns, which can actually be twin guns if you want. So twin light guns, light machine guns, sorry. You've got the Flail tank, Sherman Flail. You've got the Wesp uh, flamethrower tank, which is just evil. Um, various armoured cars, you've got the Humber, the Fox, the Lynx, uh, then you've got the M29 uh, Weasel, uh, which was a Canadian um, Special Forces vehicle, I believe, truck-like thing, was it? No, it's an armoured vehicle. Um, amphibious as well, if you want it to be, which is kind of cool. Armoured truck. This is the C-15 TA armoured truck that uh, the skirmish, the, sorry, the scout squad could go in. So it's a, basically it's a truck with seven plus armour value and can carry up to eight men. There's also an ambulance version of that if you wish. Number of extra um, vehicle options for the Canadians. So they can have kangaroos, which is basically, um, uh, it was the priest anti-tank, um, self-propelled gun I believe that just they took the gun out and it became an armoured troop carrier. You've got the uh, Otter light reconnaissance car which uh, basically only has an anti-tank rifle or, or an LMG although you could upgrade it to heavy machine gun apparently. You've got the Sexton, you've got the uh, Staghound uh, Mark 1 heavy armoured car option. And then the Germans don't get so much in this book. There's not so much new for them in terms of new units. You have um, the uh, Helden, oh, I, I was practicing things earlier, Helden Klagen, oh, I don't know. Anyway, basically this is non-combatants who've been forced into fighting. Um, and it's 30 points each for a unit of five men, which you can add additional five. You can have LMGs, you can have Panzer, a Panzerfaust if you want. Um, but um, they count as eight, uh, we ain't foot sloggers. So because they're not really trained to be soldiers, they don't get any benefit of the NCO. And in fact, it's, it's treated as if they've lost the NCO. So that's a minus one on there. So not only the experience, inexperienced, but they've also lost their NCO. So that's another minus one. They have minimal training as well. So you can't use the nation's special rules. So you couldn't use the extra rifle shot. You couldn't use, uh, sorry, the extra um, LMG shot. You couldn't use the um, ability to replace your NCO those sort of things. I guess you uh, you couldn't also use, um, when a German officer does a snap to order, you couldn't use extra, you'd have to use the normal amount that most other nations use as well for that. 
in terms of the German, uh, sorry, um, these are theatre, theatre specific lists. So you've got a British late war anti tank uh, reinforced platoon, which is basically lots of six pounders. You've got Achilleses and priests, if you want, as vehicles, um, field artillery, Bofus guns as well, a mortar reinforced platoon. You've got a machine gun reinforced platoon. I'm not sure why you'd want that. Machine guns aren't that great in uh, in bolt action, really, but you can have machine gun squads if you want. You've got a mid and late war raw artillery gun troop uh, platoon, which basically can have uh, 0-2 um, guns from field artillery, uh, which are light artillery, anti-tank guns or anti-aircraft guns. Plus you can have another anti-aircraft vehicle. Um, which is kind of interesting. You've got uh, you've got a Canadian version, or British and Canadian self-propelled artillery platoon, uh, which basically has um, uh, you can have the archer self-propelled gun, you can have the ex sextant, you can have the priest within that. You could also have a cruiser if you want, or centaur, the wolverine, um, which is kind of an interesting option as well. And then these are specialist um, armoured formations they talk about here. So you talk about the various different formations that existed and were involved in this campaign. And here are some of the divisions that, uh, well, this is the army list to make that division for the tank version of the game. You got the RAF regiment in Normandy as well, if you wish to do that as well. I told you this book is packed full of it. And there's their list, which involved, oh, that's, sorry, that's the RAF Armoured Car Squadron, so uh, platoon, which basically has um, uh, yeah, a Hummer uh, light reconnaissance vehicles, primarily, um, as its sort of differentiator. Um, then you've got German lists, so this is the Static Division Reinforced Platoon. It's basically, so the idea was that although um, obviously the Germans defended quite heavily the um, the coast of France. They didn't want to leave fully trained units there for often years on end. So they brought in replacements, um, sick, injured, uh, um, non-German divisions. So this is to represent that. Um, and they're quite, yeah, not particularly brilliant. There's no, oh, there is armour. Yeah, you can have a Panzer IV, you can have a Stug. You can have a Marder, have a Grill, Opal Blitz with a, a Pack 38, um, plus a number of the squads. Um, okay, so this, because um, it was such a shocking effect for most of these static divisions, um, when they saw the invasion forces, they basically have to do a special die roll before the game starts, which basically represents their reaction to the huge invasion force and allied bombardment that took place so on a one um, they become shirkers no matter what they are they're downgraded to inexperience two to five no effect and six they actually could become stubborn and inexperienced troops are upgraded to regular so that's kind of cool um, there's uh, options of um, reluctant troops um, there's even the option here if you, if you want to you could downgrade your LMGs to say that they were old-fashioned guns from the First World War um, So you lose the Hitler buzzsaw rule, uh, but it obviously saves points um, You've got the uh, Panzer Lieb division here Another options here, which is obviously a bit more high quality um, And then in here you've got armoured observation vehicles. So these basically allow you to act artillery uh, or forward artillery observers, but within an armoured vehicle. So even though you might take a Cromwell um, observation tank, it can't use its main gun. The gu guns on these things were dummies. And so um, you can't use it in the game. You just use the, the dummy. Um, sorry, just use the machine gun in this case but it's treated like an observation um, thing. You've got Otters, you've got Shermans, you've got Rams. Germans have a number of observation vehicles as well. 
and then there's some new rules here on intelligence officers so um, basically they have they have a, a number of special rules with them so they have attached they have training and they have intelligence so let's just have a quick look and see what those mean attached means may be only be taken when adding added to an officer unit or detailed in special units so basically it can't be alone it has to be attached to some in somehow um, what was the intelligence the other one? once a game at the beginning of any turn the intelligence officer may act on intelligence gathered about the enemy um, before the first dice is drawn from the dice bag roll a d6 and apply the following modifier with a minus one if it's inexperienced plus one if he's veteran on a four plus the player activating the intelligence officer may choose a dice from the bag for first activation if both a uh, both players attempt to activate this ability simultaneously each must roll d6 and the highest wins so that's kind of cool um and what was the other one training wasn't it um must be the same quality of officer to the bodies attached so basically if, if you put him with your commander in chief and the commander in chief is also your um, um lieutenant or what have you and if he's veteran this guy has to be veteran can't can't be anything different so that's kind of nice uh you've got british intelligent officer so they also have an ability to be behind the lines um, and uh, stubborn and tough fighters as well so behind the lines when out flanking um, the unit ignores minus one modifier to the order check for coming on the table so basically you could put an intelligence officer with your unit and bring him on uh, from the flank which is kind of cool um, and you've got more chance of arriving basically so there's also support officers and these basically work as trained gunners and gun commanders so much the same way as an officer helps infantry squads these guys will help um, you know anti-tank guns and that sort of thing um, trained gunners HQ staff is made up of soldiers who will spend who spent a day, great deal of time working in or around heavy weapons uh, this unit counts as an artillery unit for the purposes of recruiting so basically if you've got a unit of support officers they could replace gun crew who have been killed which is an interesting option as well chaplains um, so chaplains cost 20 points inexperienced 25 regular and 30 veterans so they look like a cheap dice basically um, they're self-defense only so they can't do anything hostile and they can only be equipped with a pistol uh, but it can only be used in self-defense they're non-combatant combatants um, they're there to support troops not to win battles so you can't use them to contest or claim objectives and they have an inspiring presence upon receiving their order dice except for down a chaplain may select a friendly unit within six inches and roll a d6 applying the following modifiers minus one if they're inexperienced plus one if they're veteran on a four plus they can move a pin from the selected unit then you've got um, this is section is all around um, British and um, various allied commando units so these are commando forces which look absolutely awesome you've got late war royal marines commando heavy weapons commando medics commando forward observer intelligence officer chaplain you've got the beach master so if you've got that model that came with um I'm sorry show the model now I think that came with one of the books I can't remember which one it was um, probably the D-Day book um, you can have a beach master if you wish um, which helps out considerably in those kind of missions so you've got here the um, early and mid-war commando section list so 56 points for a veteran unit armed with rifles but only three men and, a, and an NCO and you can upgrade up to eight extra men or you've got a late war uh, group which is 70 points as a veteran which is actually four men plus a, an NCO can have an additional five 
They have the behind enemy lines trait, which means they don't suffer that minus one for coming on. Uh, the late war, in fact, they've both got tank killers or tank hunters if they're um, got anti-tank grenades and also tough fighter. You've got a Royal Navy commando subsection, which is interesting as well. So if you fancy doing a different sort of army list, that would be fun. You've got uh, late war, uh, Royal Marine commando assault section. So they're tough fighters, lead from the front, uh, behind enemy lines, tank hunters, the lot. So you've got uh, commando intelligence officer, you've got commando en engineer. So you can have your flamethrower if you wish. You could even got a commando motorcycle section, sniper, anti-tank rifle, piet. Basically everything you could possibly want to build a commando group. Flamethrower, mortars of different descriptions, machine gun. Lovely picture again, really good. A couple of new characters, you've got uh, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Young and you've got uh, Patrick Ray, Royal, uh, Royal Marines, um, which have very special uh, rules if you wish. You have Captain de Corvette, Philip Keffer, um, who also, what does he have? Leads from the front, uh, tough fighter, behind enemy lines. He's a veteran major. Wow. Then there's a number of scenario lists for the commandos. So you've got uh, the early war raids. So this is a different commando group to the mid war and the late war commando troops. So again, it allows you to, to build your lists according to the period you're trying to reenact. Um, this one is the, this is the Canadian troops. So if you're into your Canadians and there's a number of people who are really looking forward to doing this, you've got your uh, different um, uh, units. So there's a Canadian officer. They have a can loan. Canadian officer may be selected in any British army selector in Africa, Italy, Northwest Europe, or Southeast Asia in 1944 to 45, except for commandos. Canadian officers do not use the national characteristics. Instead, they always have dogged and hate the SS rule. So dogged, basically this is the natural at national attributes of the Canadian Army. Um, because they were well-trained and motivated volunteers, all regular and veteran Canadian infantry units may be upgraded to stubborn for just one point per man, and all inexperienced Canadians may be, uh, may be green for one point a man. That's actually really useful. Hating the SS, after numerous Canadian prisoners were murdered by the SS in Normandy, Canadians expected no quarter when fighting the SS. Canadian troops are fanatical when fighting in close combat with SS troops. That's kind of fun. So the Canadian list has uh, observer, uh, infantry section. Uh, infantry is 50 points for a regular group of four men with an NCO with rifles. Uh, you've got the Canadian parachutes if you wish. Canadian tank hunter section which are basically SMG and anti-tank grenade armed basically. You've got Canadian recce uh, patrol which looks fantastic. Uh, 80 points for a veteran for two men and, a, and uh, an NCO with uh, submachine guns. But uh, they have a behind enemy lines, their recon ability, so they can spot troops, enemy hidden troops at 18 rather than 12 inches. Um, intelligence gatherers, I mean, they're just full of good, good stuff. We've got a sniper group, you've got field engineers or uh, pioneers, and then various artillery. They've got the Churchill Mark II special tank, it was a flamethrower variant of the tank, the Ram cruiser tank, the Canadian Sherman. Stewart's uh, self-propelled gun, which is the Ram Badger, which is basically a flamethrower tank again. Um, Canadian Armoured Cars section has uh, sidecars, really cheesy thing, but they're very useful, and has a recce carrier. Uh, you've got the Skink AA tank, which is a special uh, light anti-tank um, anti-aircraft gun had basically uh, four 20 millimeter cannons most uh, mounted on a grizzly uh, tank hull. <laughs> wow. It was highly effective at suppressing ground targets. 
but no enemy aircrafts were engaged. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Um, four 20 mil cannons, it's pretty effective. And here's the, the theatre list for the Canadian Army. Uh, you've got, what have we got here? Well, this is the Canadian Army 1939 to 42. You've got 1943 uh, to 44. And then you've got the Canadian Infantry 45. Um, then you've got a reinforced Canadian Infantry Platoon 1945. And you've got a Canadian Airborne uh, 1944 to 45. Canadian Armour. So if you want to just play the tank variation, that gives you the option there. And this is a section on the Hitler Youth, the 12th SS Hitler Jungen. Um, so they have special rule of uh, Antgrief. Antgrief? I think that's how you say it. If the unit fails an order test while on the table, the unit doesn't go down, but is instead must be moved as far as possible towards the closest enemy visible unit, charging it if at all possible. Note that this happens even if it's unable to run, this unit cannot fire. This rule only applies to infantry that are on the ground and not in transports and doesn't apply to a medic team. They also have uh, suicidal fanaticism. The overzealous nature of soldiers' indoctrination would tragically boil over in instances of extreme violence and aggression, often at the cost of their own lives. This fanaticism would cause uh, to the cause meant that they did not easily give in and would fight to the death. Any unit with this rule gains the fanatic special rule. However, when an enemy rolls to damage any non-vehicle units in the 12th SS force, the unit's damage value is treated one less than normal. Wow. So inexperienced troops are killed basically on two instead of a three. Um, so they have a couple of special uh, units. So there's the SS officer. This is um, has a blind obedience special rule and tempered steel special rule. Um, so tempered steel basically stops those two national characteristics um, if they're within six inches of the officer, um, and basically become just normal normal fanatics. And you've got, uh, so that's, what's the difference? That's the <clears throat> 12th SS unit. Oh, let's say the SS officer. And then you can have a support officer as well, if you wish, uh, which is basically um, can support the artillery, any guns or what have you have. There's the infantry squads. Nice pictures again, really nice. It's what you expect from Osprey, isn't it? Infantry squads, uh, 35 points for an experienced group of four men plus an NCO, 50 for a regular. Um, you can have up to seven more men if you wish. 12th SS Pioneers. Uh, you have a special character here, uh, Kurt Panzer Meyer, uh, who was a policeman who joined the Nazi party in 1930. Um, so he has tempered steel, steel rule, inspired fanaticism. Any friendly unit with suicidal, fan, suicidal fanaticism or fanatical special rules within 12 inches of Maya retain the full physical, full fanatical rules even when reduced to one unit, one man, sorry. So basically they'll fight to the death when they're close to him. Uh, then there's a theatre selector for the 12th um, uh, Panzer Grenadiers or SS Panzer Grenadiers. Um, you've got an army list here for the uh, regimental platoon, the mortar platoon, and then there's the field. Oh my goodness, there's so much in here. Luftwaffe division. Again, I know this is a popular one because it's a bit different. So you've got special. Um, uh, special units here for the uh, Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe defense squads, reconnaissance squads, pioneers. You got uh, flat guns, as obviously. Uh, they do have a captured French tank called the Turmstilung. Oh, so no, that's not. They've got this Turmstilung, which is actually an emplaced um, turret. It's the turret from a Renault put on a uh, basically a, a, like a, uh, an emplacement effectively which is kind of interesting you've got that you can actually have the Renault um, FT-17 if you wish they've got horse-drawn uh, wagons 
and then again select a list here for for the Luftwaffe uh, including a Luftwaffe flak platoon then there's very special rules around digging in fortifications uh, barbed wire trenches artillery positions bunkers because obviously that plays a huge part in this period of the of the war minefields dummy minefields and clearing of minefields because there are the uh, the flail tanks in this game rubble because there's some street fighting so that's uh, kind of crucial some of those fights in the rubble are going to be really interesting Com command and control in a city fight and there you go that is the book and um, and i have to say you know, for 20 quid or 13 pounds if you go to amazon or somewhere else i think this is an extremely good value book i think it's a great read there's some great there's some really good history in here some interesting battles that they've picked out on the scenarios and if you're into bolt action i think it's an absolute must um if you're into your late war that is um i think it's a really really good read so there you go that's my look through it um so it just arrived haven't played any games in it obviously um but um I can't wait to try it out actually i might even be tempted to go for a late war british army based on this book because it does look very very interesting so there you go i hope you found it interesting and useful if you did please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so um, as i say down in the description you'll find a link to warlords and also to amazon where you can pick these uh, rule sets up um, no extra cost to you uh, I just get a little um, tiny, tiny percentage if you do make a sale, um, which comes back and helps me to um, finance some of the channel and upgrade and improve the sort of stuff I'm doing. So I appreciate it if anybody does that. Just a little tiny bit of help, which is great. Anyway, I hope everyone's well, staying safe, staying in if that's appropriate and where, you're, where you are when you're watching this video. Um, and... Um, I'm yeah, so hoping we'll get back to some gaming sometime soon. So this is Dom signing out. See you again soon. Mm.